Hey, and welcome to this episode of the Welfare Book Club, where today we'll be talking about a book that's probably one of the best known finance books recommended to people who are just starting to understand finance. That book is George Klassen's The Richest Man in Babylon, which was written in 1926. Now, Klassen was an author who wrote information pamphlets about achieving financial success. And these pamphlets were compiled to create the richest man in Babylon. Considered to be a great self-help book for wealth creation. Now, if you haven't heard of Babylon, it's a city in the ancient civilization of Mesopotamia. And Mr. Klassen provided his financial advice by setting parables in the city. By teaching financial advice through these interesting stories, he makes it very easy to understand for lay people. He portrays the Babylonians as people who understand the key principles of wealth, which is save, invest and protect your wealth. Through the fictitious character of Arkad, the reader learns how to financially plan one's life and how to amass your personal finances. Mr. Klassen's financial advice is divided into two parts, the seven cures and the five laws of gold. The seven cures aim to teach people how to make money. And the five laws aim to teach people how to safeguard their money. In this edition, we are going to break down the seven cures for you and leave the five laws of gold for your own enjoyment when you read The Richest Man in Babylon. So what are the seven cures according to George Klassen? Number one, fact in your purse. Like many experts, the author believes a portion of your wealth must be saved for a rainy day. Even a small percentage, as small as 10%, will go a long way in the long run and this will fatten a lean purse. Number two, control your expenditure. See, with a great income comes great responsibility. The author advises us not to splurge on non-essential items and learn to differentiate between a necessity and a luxury. When we buy things that deteriorate or depreciate in value, it doesn't seem like a prudent investment because it only makes someone else richer. Number three, make your gold multiply. Compounding is key and by investing, the author tells us to make your money work for you and not vice versa. This also means you will listen to the people who are skilled in their respective fields. But that doesn't mean you should take their word as gospel because everybody loves to give advice. It's up to you to guess how credible someone's advice is. Number four. Guard your treasures against loss. Get rich schemes are not ideal as the odds are they don't really work. Because usually they are too good to be true. Ek scheme hai. Ameero ki scheme mere haath lagi hai. Hmm. 25 din mein paisa double. Oh, 25 din mein paisa double? <laughs> the desire to generate wealth rapidly may not always be fulfilled no matter how easy it seemingly is. A good way to guard your treasures is also to familiarize oneself with the industries you want to invest in. Because people may attempt to delude you to deplete your resources. Number five, make a profitable investment from where you live. Your residence can be used to establish a business Mr. Klassen believes it's wiser to purchase a home rather than rent one to live in. By doing so, you are in a possession of an asset that appreciates in value over time rather than just making someone else richer by paying them rent. Number six, 
ensure a future income be it a pension or some kind of retirement fund it is imperative to have a future income for retirement because the older you get the more prepared you must be for tougher times so you would need a source of income for the future the earlier you start compounding your money the more money you'll have to live off when you eventually plan to retire number 7 increase your ability to earn the greatest gift we can give ourselves is to constantly equip ourselves with skills which we can capitalize on those skills provide a utility to us that augments how wisely we invest and so the more we learn about our craft the richer we would be rewarded and we live in the golden age of internet where information is so much more available and accessible than it was nearly a century ago from when this book was written the richest man in babylon contains many gold nuggets of financial advice dispersed throughout the book certainly too many to list out here and these nuggets enumerate the laws of money which are a lot like the laws of gravity unchanging of course to self impose and to act on the seven cures or the five laws of gold it would take a tremendous amount of discipline but if you act on them in the long run you come to realize the difference between having absolute financial freedom and being chained to someone else richer your whole life but of course some disclaimers have to be established the book is set in ancient babylon and so the language the lines and the phrases do sound old timey and confusing as a comparison if you're not a fan of the way william shakespeare presents his words in his various works or even the way the bible was written you may also be put off by the text stylings of the richest man in babylon if that's not a barrier of entry you are able to read between the lines then you would definitely be able to interpret what's written in this book another contention we have with this book is that some of the lessons from the parables may seem redundant as they complement previous fables but this isn't a critical issue because we do allow the author to have creative licenses with how he wants to present his ideas another critique we had with this book is mr clausen's assertion that real estate is the best possible investment for people this may not necessarily be true as there is no empirical evidence to support this claim and in fact real estate has been known to depreciate sometimes in value for various reasons a lot of people have made 10 times their investment in various other avenues besides real estate this also contradicts a moral from his book of not investing in something you don't know much about but let's give credit where the credit is due these principles are concise and simple for people who are just starting to learn about personal finance and investing it is a good read the stories are interesting and we believe it's one fun and informative class in establishing your financial freedom